Hey guys, what's up? Last time we were able to set up our Travis configuration, we were able to make it run a build and run tests, and then we were able to add a badge to our GitHub repo. So this time I want us to start adding tests for for red the, this time I want us to add to start adding tests for the registration feature. So to start, what I want to do when you create an app, Django automatically creates a test.py file. So what I want to do is I want to delete it and then create a, a package. So what you're going to do is in the authentication app, you're going to create a folder called tests. And in here, we are going to first add our data in it. If you may not know, this actually makes this directory a Python package so we can import from it. The reason why we are, we are creating a, a separate test directory is most of the time you're going to have an app that has different files and those different files will handle different functionality. So you might want to create a test folder and then create separate files to test those different functionalities. So here I'm going to create a file called test authentication. .py. Notice my casing, I start with tests and this is really helpful when Django is trying to discover these test files and our tests. So it's important to name it like that. So to start, let's import the testing utilities that Django provides us. So from django.test import, we are going to use a class called test case. One of the first things I usually do is create a class and I call it base test. So this inherits from test case, of course. Now, in this class, create a test setup method. So setup, okay. Now in the setup is where we do all our initializations for the tests. So the setup basically is called once before each test is run. So meaning it's a good place for us to set things like the testing data and all that stuff. So here, one of the first things I'm going to do is get the URL to the registration page. So I'm going to import a utility code reverse so from Django dot URLs import reverse so once you have that now to get the regist register url so django self.register okay for it to register url pass in okay so register url equals now we use the reverse utility and then we give it a view name basically a view name is when you come to our urls file then it's this the unique name we give to all our routes. So you can see the reason why that URL name should be unique because it always, when Django runs reverse, should always get one URL. Once that is done, I'm going to create a separate class to basically do all the testing for the registration. I'm going to call it register test and this will inherit from our base class, this test. Okay, now here I'm going to create a, a test to actually check if we can actually view that page. Test can view page correctly okay so this of course takes in so because we are in a class now we can when we inhale from test case it gives us access to the client so this is a test client for django that we can use to make requests in the testing environment so now we want to do a get request using the client and we want to go to the registration URL so we can get it from self.register URL. And now when we make a request, it gives us a response. So we may as well store that response. And now we want to run assertions on this response. So if we do self.assert equal, we want to make sure we can access that page by checking its status code. So response dot status code should be 200 then also let's just do a check for the template so assert template used and here we can just give it the text in a response then you give it a template name so in our case this should be read auth slash register dot html i believe okay so let's just cross check one more time templates auth register good so now we can run python 
manage.py test and see how it behaves. So as you can see, it runs the test and the test passes. If we change this to, to check if it actually uses the login page, then it should fail. You can see it fails. Yeah, then if we change this, then it will fail, meaning that the, the task the test is written properly. What this would help in this case is if another team member comes to the team or maybe they try changing something in order to fix maybe part in, in order to fix their code to work in a certain way, it's going to tell them, hey, the things are not meant to work like that. You're trying to you're breaking something and that will be pretty helpful. So so let's see what we need to test next. So if we come back to our view, we can easily see that uh, we have tested this. But one of the best ways to know what to test is to use the coverage module. So Python 3 comes with a module called coverage and it can actually tell us where we need to test and what we've tested. So to use the coverage module, just run use coverage, run, then you give it a source flag, then a source flag text in a list of directories. So in this case we want to test what's in the authentication. Then now we want to run a command manager py test. Okay, so then we want to run coverage report. Coverage report also. That gives us the report. So once we run that, we can see that it's the basic idea. Lists all our files and tells us how much we've tested of those files. So you can see we are doing pretty bad at our views. But what's really important and what can be really helpful is to be able to see which lines that we need to test here. So what, to get the lines, we basically need to add another command here. So coverage HTML. What that does is create an HTML folder. And now this contains files that we can now open in Chrome and then see how they behave. So I'm going to use a package called live server. Live server. If you don't have it, you can just do npm install minus g live dash server. Once you get that, then now you can cd into HTML curve and then run live server. There. When we do that, basically it starts up a server and then now we can see uh, our report here. Now we can click on the on the details page so we can see that where wherever we see red, we need to test those lines so now we can see that we've been able to test this so now let's see how to test this registration it's so moving on if in the test authentication we want to write another test so dev test can register user text itself and here we can basically do a post request so if with post, we were going, we are posting to the registration page, register URL. Now the second part we pass in is the data. And then it's also important to pass in a format of the data we are sending. And in this case, we do, it's basically HTML, just text slash HTML. To get the data to use, basically we are going to create the user object here, user dictionary. So self.user equals it's going to be a dictionary then it's going to contain an email so an email can be something like test email at gmail.com so it also expects a username so username this can be like username but really can be anything then the password can be password then what else very confirm password which is password to can be password we basically I want to provide the correct credentials such that we can actually test the registration so also we need a full name so full name and the full name is uh, let's just do full name. Fine. We need a comma here. Now we have the user, so we can pass this user here. So self dot user. Okay. We need to let's see indent. Let's pull out the indent a bit. We can store everything we get into response. 
so we can check the status code of this so self dot assert equal response dot status code and now we basically want to check that when we register we are able to redirect the login page so basically a redirect will return a 302 okay so if we run this test now okay i need to get in another terminal here which you can do by i'm actually going to stop out this server and then cd back and then run the tests here so you can see you can see that it fails and then it's telling us oh so we need it has to be served with client end with post so yeah so let's run again you can see that it fails that's basically because if we take a look at our view the view expects this to be name not full name so if we come and change this to name run the test again it's going to create a test database and then run the test and now we can see that the test is passing if we can ccd html curve live server if we can check our live server again you can see that it has increased and now all this is tested and all this is tested and then all this is tested we need to test these red lines so meaning we need to supply a password that's less than six and then we see how it behaves less than six characters meaning i can create now another user here user short password short password and so here we basically need to check if that works by putting a password as less and trying to run that test that test again. So I'm going to copy this. Then this can't we can test for user can't register with short password. Then we need to to send a user that has a short password. User short password. And now we expect so we expect four hundred not 404 so if you run that then it should pass because it actually saw what the view was returning so here in the view we can see that when we have errors we return 400 so that's what it was checking for so that should actually pass if we check back here i see that now this part is tested so we need to add now a test for this meaning we need to apply a password that's not equal to the password to so that should be really easy to do. So see the same thing. I can just call this unmatching. Pull this here. And then can call test.tt. Then have the same thing. But then put an O. So once we've created this user, we can now create another test. So another test here can't register user with unmatching passwords unmatching passwords so now we need to use unmatching okay save it this should also pass run and it passes our, our coverage increases if we check the, the file then this passes also so also we need to check if we send up an invalid email to see if this actually works okay so you can see this is really not hard but then it helps us to keep our code contact and make changes and be sure that the changes don't break any existing functionality so now we want user with invalid email so this can be okay let's apply something that's like a website or something then let's write a test to check that just do this let's put it up put it back so user with invalid email so this we can now use invalid email user 
and check if it also fails with the 400. This is not indebted properly. Put it like here. Run the test again. And then it passes. We see that it increases to 74. If we reload, we can actually see that it has passed also. Now we need to test out if a user can't use an email that has been taken. So to do that, we just need to do this. So we just to do that, we just need to create another test. So the whole flow is the same for all the tests we write. So test can't register with taken email. With taken, let me just replace this to can't register with taken email. And now what we need to do is make two requests in one test using the same email. So basically I could just get this this here. Just copy this. Actually, you can just copy all of it. Then here. So first of all, we make a post request with the user, meaning that user now is using that email. Now we want to make another one. So I want to make another one and we check for the second response. Okay. So this would mean that we have created a user with the one email, then we are trying to create another one with the same email. So this should not actually do 300. So, so it should do 400. Not 404, but 400. And that's a bad request status code. So if we run again, we can see that it passes, then it increases our coverage 77. So if we check, we can see that all that is done. So it actually ran the test for the same username also, because we actually sending with the same username and it's failing the same way. So meaning now we have correctly tested all our registration functionality so we can move on. So this is just the beginning guys. I will be making more videos to show you more tricks that we can do here. I just wanted to keep this beginner level such that you can know how to catch up adding tests to your code. Once that is done, I'm going to stop the video here. If you're new to the channel, I want to urge you to subscribe because I'm going to be making regular videos about these kinds of topics. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.